you get a call from your credit card company asking if an unusual charge is really yours. That's become an effective protection from identity thieves. But as two investigator Pam Zachman shows us, they have now found a way around it. Of course they have, Pam. Of course, Robin Kate. It's called porting. Legitimately used, it's a convenient way to transfer your old phone number to a new phone or home. Illegitimately, it's being used by identity thieves to facilitate fraud. The caller was conducting a survey. And they asked me three questions this morning and they all were related to children and watching TV. He responded. She says, now you gotta put your, hit the nine because you're gonna record your answers. Within hours, his AT&T home phone was dead. Nothing. So what happened? The identity thieves transferred the phone number on the landline in their home to the thief's cell phone. A prepaid T-Mobile cell phone. FCC porting rules are vague on what carriers must do to validate a request, and the rules require the transfer to be done in one day. I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it, that they could hijack this phone. To stop it, experts say the FCC rules need to be tightened. In trying to balance the convenience to the consumer and the interests of the telephone companies, they've made it really way too easy for bad guys to exploit the system and that's the key to this whole fraud. Also key, the fraudsters had Pothig's Bank of America credit card information and records show they charged more than $14,000 mostly for untraceable prepaid cash cards. The largest amount was at this Walgreens, more than $9,000. I said, how in the world can anybody charge $9,600 at, at, a, at a Walgreens? Bank of America red flagged some of the charges and called the Pothig's number listed in their records, but apparently reached the crooks. So the scammers get called and tell the banks that the illegitimate charges are really legitimate. Exactly. Bank of America finally reached the Pothigs by mail, canceled the charges from their old card, and gave them a new one. And now we've learned the same thing can happen with call forwarding. Is this an example of the scammers once again being one step ahead of the reforms? Exactly. And this is going to take off like wildfire. AT&T and T-Mobile said they followed FCC rules, but after our inquiries, they restored the Pothig's phone number to their landline. The FCC called this an alarming instance of fraud, now under review, along with more than 100 other porting complaints. And Robin Cape, both the Illinois Attorney General and Chicago Police are investigating this. So when it happens to someone, what are they to do? If you think that your phone has been ported by someone else, you have to call your phone company, report it. If it's confirmed, you need to do all of the check with all the usual suspects. You need to check with your credit bureaus. You need to report it to your bank and your credit card company. Right away. That's good advice. What